part of the experiment to teach you a technique also, how to heat a test tube directly on the flame. Make sure you use a test tube holder. Second, you want to keep the test tube uh, with the 45 degree angle. You don't want to keep it straight. Third, you want to keep it in and out of the flame. For the purpose of the experiment two, uh, part three, uh, we are heating the copper sulfate, hydrated copper sulfate, until it changes color. Basically, is going to lose the water of hydration. And as it loses the water of hydration, we see that water vapor is coming out of the end of the test tube or opening of the test tube. And also, we see a color change of the, of the sample. So the blue color is disappearing and the white color appears. So the color change, there is a color change here and copper sulfate has lost the, the water. After this, the test tube cools off, it cools down to room temperature, I'm going to add drop of a liquid, a drop of water Following the procedure, we always follow the procedure. That's why I want you to read the procedure before you even watch the video, because it makes more sense and you understand better. So I want to wait, because I don't want, if the glass is hot and uh, doesn't have any liquid in there, if I add any water, it can, uh, it can break, it can shatter the glass. But when I wait, when it's cold, and how do I know it's cold? Of course, if it's hot or cold glass, it's the same. It looks the same. Uh, but instead of touching it, I would just get my hand close enough to the, to the test tube. If I feel the radiation or the heat uh, from a distance, that means the test tube still is hot. So if I get like fairly close to it and I don't feel the heat, means the test tube has um, been cooled or has you know, cooled off enough for me to add a couple drops of water to the test tube at this point. So by adding water, drop of water, uh, the purpose of this experiment is that for you to see that the blue color calls, uh, comes back and this is a reversible uh, process. The, high, the water of hydrate left as a result of heating. It came back after um, I add water to anhydrous copper sulfate, which was the white color. Part three of experiment two, I'm adding calcium carbonate to a test tube, and I will add I will add uh, water about six milliliter of water, about half of this test tube, I would add water um, to dissolve and divide this into two test tubes, about three milliliters to one test tube and about three milliliters to another test tube. I have my test tube A and test tube B prepared with sodium carbonate. I have the sodium carbonate solution uh, prepared. To test tube A is asking me to add HCl. So I would add to test tube A. This is the test tube A from part three, two of experiment two. To this test tube, I would add drops of HCl to sodium carbonate. See the bubbles that is forming that's a reaction between the sodium carbonate and HCl. Those are the bubbles that is forming. If to, to make it a bit more dramatic, you could add more of the uh, sodium carbonate solutions. It's going to um, react and form bubbles. Okay. As I'm adding HCl, 
and I want you to be able to, to see them, the reaction. Formation of a gas or formation of bubbles is one evidence for a chemical reaction. To the second test tube, which is a test tube B, we have now clear solution. The instruction or the procedure is asking me to add calcium chloride. So I will take the calcium chloride and add calcium chloride to second solution. When I add the calcium chloride, see that? A white precipitate, it turns very cloudy, and a white precipitate is, is forming. So the white precipitate form. For next step of the reaction, ask me to use the copper sulfate, blue color copper sulfate solution we had from step two, we saved before. We want to add a piece of magnesium. If magnesium reacts with copper sulfate, or when magnesium reacts with copper sulfate, which is going to take some time, but this reaction actually will take place, the blue color of the copper sulfate would disappear. And if you look at the close up, you see like some activity is, is going on now. Uh, Magnesium is going into solution. Uh, copper is coming out and you might see those, those red color particles that is forming. That's basically copper coming out. Even if you don't see the copper coming out, you will see that the blue color would disappear because the magnesium is actually, is uh, when it goes to solution, it doesn't give blue color. It's going to be um, colorless. So the particles that are forming, this reddish brown particles that are forming at the bottom of the test tube, these are the copper is coming out of the solution. Magnesium is going in, copper is coming out. The color is changing. The color would, uh, the blue color would uh, disappear and we get that colorless solution eventually. I'm going to leave it in a test tube hold rack and I will show you after I'm done with part four of the experiment. Okay. Uh, for part four of the experiment, we are using HCl with piece of magnesium in a test tube. And we want to see if they, which one would react faster, magnesium, copper, or zinc. I'm going to hold it up because I don't want you to miss if there is like immediate reaction. Uh, not the best and the most safest practice, but holding with my hand. Uh, but when I add this to uh, zinc, you see some bubbles forming. With the copper, you tell me what you see with the copper. And then with magnesium, I'm adding to the magnesium. So the copper is kind of easy in the middle, you could see. And uh, you are looking for formation of gas, formation of bubbles. The faster they form, the more reactive the element is. So if I take this closer, where you could see it better, um, is the um, magnesium reacting with HCl. Okay, that's magnesium reacting with HCl. And then with copper, I don't see much of the activity. I don't see bubbles. And I want you to pay attention and record your observation. Uh, zinc, I see some bubbles and you can compare the three of them and you can put them in order, which one is the most reactive toward HCl. For the uh, second part of the, of the experiment for basically part four, two, 
um, is asking us to dissolve sodium carbonate and ammonium nitrate in water and check the temperature. Now check the temperature before it's at 22 degree. I check that temperature. It's at 22 before mixing. And I want to put the two uh, samples. in the uh, test tube, add water, and as dissolves, I want you to, to look at the thermometer and monitor the temperature, see what happens with the temperature when this compound dissolves in water. And as you read the, the introduction part of this experiment, you would notice the definition for a compound that they um, release heat as a result of the action or they absorb heat what is the exact terminology for it i don't want to give all the information here but when you read the introduction you will see one is exothermic and the other one is endothermic for exothermic the temperature would go higher for endothermic the temperature would decrease so i can feel that it's like cold, but you cannot feel it. You're not here. I'm going to have to show you the te thermometer. The level of the thermometer now is 22 is all the way up here, and now is down here. Okay. And I will do a still, uh, you know, um, a screenshot of this for you also to see it for uh, for the ammonium nitrate. So this is for ammonium nitrate. For ammonium nitrate, the temperature went down to nine. And then for uh, for the sodium carbonate, we dissolve the sodium carbonate. I have the temperature that was at 22. Um, and I want you to look at the temperature after mixing that the temperature 22 is right here and the blue line now is past 30. So from 22, it went up to um, 30 degrees uh, for the exothermic type reaction. 